Uh, now I'm going to talk about the, uh, the loading of the kiln. Once you've got the pots glazed and you've cleaned the bottoms real well, the next part is loading them in the kiln. By the way, the, the pots are fired the first time, it's called the bisque fire, to get them hard enough to do the glazing. So the, the pots have already been fired to about 2,000 degrees. This is the second firing, this is the glaze fire. I started loading this kiln already. I hope to fire it tomorrow if I get it loaded today. Uh, and this process is, it really demands the potter's complete focus. Because as, as you notice here, each shelf is placed on these posts. And there's only three per post, so there's, or per shelf. A post here, a post in that corner, and a post in that corner. So as the stack grows, you've got what could be a precarious situation. There's always a little bit of movement, but a lot of maintenance in keeping your posts really flat. Uh, I, in my 40 years of being a potter, I, I've, I've come close, but I've never had a catastrophic kiln accident, but they, they do happen. Uh, these shelves here are state-of-the-art. They're silicon carbide. They are guaranteed not to warp. Uh, when I got into pottery 40 years ago, these, these particular shelves weren't available, and all the shelves you could buy would eventually warp, and you couldn't use them anymore, because the pots, at the height of the firing, they get soft again, and they'll take on an uneven surface that they're sitting on. So to have very, very level shelves is very important, at least for the way I fire. Um, these shelves cost me $250 each, and I have 18 of them. So uh, just to give you an idea of what the potter has to sometimes pay for the process. So, um, and also because this, this, this is about a 50 cubic foot kiln, it takes me about $200 of propane to fire it. Uh, I'm very careful to get as many pots in as I can. Um, you'll choose pots of a certain height to go on, on each shelf, and you, you choose a corresponding height post. Uh, after each firing, the, the kiln shelves have to be ground. Uh, it doesn't take too long, but it's a hand grinder. These pots over here have all been glazed and they're waiting to be loaded. Now when they're waiting to be fired, the glaze has dried and what's left on the surface is a, is a, is a powder, really. This fine-grained fine powder, which then later melts to form the glass or glaze. Um, it, it generally takes me the biggest part of a day to load a kill because I'm so fussy about using space really well. I built this kiln. It's built of a very special kind of fire brick. Uh, it's a very light brick. It's full of air. This piece of brick here can literally be 2,000 degrees on this end, and I can pick it up with my bare hands. It'll feel hot, but I'll still be able to pick it up. The kiln is made of these bricks. Uh, if it weren't made of these bricks, it would probably cost at least twice as much to fire the kiln. Uh, Basically, it's a very simple design. You'll see these bricks here on each side. They're called the bag wall. And on each side of the kiln, there's two on this side and there's two on that side, are big burners, each rated at about 100,000 BTUs. The flame comes in, hits these bricks, and because the chimney is accessed through a hole at the very bottom, you can't see it anymore, it's at the very bottom back of the kiln, that pulls the flame first into the wall, up, and then back down through the wear and out. Uh, this kiln, fortunately, is pretty even. I'm only about a half cone, cone variation around. That, that means a, a variation of maybe 20 degrees. Uh, it'll hold, uh, for me, two weeks of work. Uh, I brick the door up. I don't have a hinge door. I kind of like the idea of bricking it up each time. I can get a nice tight fit. It takes about uh, 13, anywhere from 12 to 14 hours to fire. At the end of the firing at cone 10, if you were to look in the kiln, it is so bright with heat that you almost can't see anything. It's almost like looking into the sun. 
heat goes from uh, a low cherry red at a thousand degrees up through various shades of red into orange into yellow through yellow into yellow white and then white. Cone 10 is a, that zone where heat is between a bright yellow and a white. Very hot. Uh, it's an exciting process. I never take this process for granted. Uh, each kiln can be quite different in some respects. The potter gets to know his kiln. I know regions that have more reduction, reduction being the, uh, the absence of oxygen. I know the zones and I know what glazes do best in what zones. Uh, there's many little things that the potter learns over the years uh, that uh, eventually helps him be successful. And I've learned too over the years not to always expect uh, too much. I, sometimes I'll unload the, the pots and not really judge them for a day or so. Uh, they begin to reveal themselves more sometimes a day or two later after the firing. Uh, it's a wonderful process though.